Mr. President, um, approved the establishment of uh, an operational base for the Navy in the lectured area. Presidential orders for guarding national coastline. Social services that meet the aspirations and expectations of the public, there must be shared responsibility, accountability, and synergy in the public service structure. Dialogue for better service delivery in government. Plots and listing sub-regional cooperation for resettling refugees. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stover. President Muhammad Buhari has challenged the Nigerian Navy to sustain efforts at developing a credible naval power towards guaranteeing security of the nation's maritime domain. This is to boost oil and gas activities and maritime trade and commerce for enhanced economic prosperity. The president threw the challenge when he granted audience to the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Ibokete Ekwe Ibas, State House correspondent, Adam Sambu reports. With his motto, Onward Together, the Nigerian Navy, which has had a phenomenal growth acquiring several sophisticated and state-of-the-art platforms, could be described as a multi-mission maritime arm of the Nigerian Armed Forces. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ete Ekwe Ibas, was in the State House to brief President Muhammad Buhari on the recent exploits of the Nigerian Navy challenges, as well as plans to effectively secure and protect the nation's territorial waters spanning 84,000 nautical miles. The briefing held behind closed doors is part of President Muhammad Buhari's ongoing strategic engagement with critical stakeholders on national security, stability, and development. Are there specific instructions to you by the President after your special briefing to you? Oh, just to continue to do that which will enable uh, our country to prosper. If you recall last month, uh, we commissioned um, the Falcon I, an MDA project called Falcon I in Calabar area. Those of uh, Lagos and um, Yenegua had been commissioned before now. Uh, this is also aimed at uh, boosting the uh, capacity of the Navy to contain the menace of um, uh, pirates. Vice Admiral Ibok Ete Ekwe Ibas also gives an update on the contributions of the Nigerian Navy to the operations of the multinational joint task force in the Lake Chad Basin aimed at containing terrorism and insurgency. Now, Mr. President um, approved the establishment of uh, an operational base for the Navy in the Lake Chad area. So, help in consolidating on the security of that area and to facilitate uh, economic activities to pick up uh, more so that uh, we are recovering from uh, the effect of the uh, insurgents in the recent past. President Buhari's engagement with those that matter in respect of the Secure Nigeria project continues. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And at the 2017 Nigerian Army Small Arms Competition, President Muhammad Buhari's message assured Nigerians that no section or territory of the country will ever be occupied by terrorists. The competition is holding in Sambisa Forest, Borno State. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. Sambisa Forest, with 60,000 square kilometer landmass, was the former stronghold of Boko Haram terrorist group, with its command and operational base situated in Camp Zero. Following the fall and capture of the forest by the Nigerian military, the chief of army staff promised to dominate and further secure the dreaded forest through the conduct of training exercise. The Nigerian Army Small Arms Championship is an army level championship designed to assess as well as enhance proficiency of Nigerian army personnel in weapon handling and marksmanship. At the annual event that was last held in 2010, with nine formations participating, the Ministry of Defense noted that strict adherence to professionalism was the cardinal factor that ensured the success recorded by the military in the war against insurgency in the Northeast. This championship is not only sharpening the marksmanship of the Nigerian Army personnel, but it will also instill the desired confidence 
and determination to achieve excellence. The federal government has named the Sambisa Forest Shooting Range after Nigerian Army's fallen hero, late Colonel Abu Ali, while the Borobo State government declared 27 March as annual Sambisa Memorial Day celebration. Very soon, the Borobo State government will respectfully request for partnership with the Federal Ministry of Defense towards working together to construct a national museum that we might call Sambisa Fall an international research center. It's a promise fulfilled by our party and by our able president when he came into power, he said, by the grace of God, Boko Haram will be over soonest. And uh, this is a manifestation of it. We commend the gallantry of the Nigerian armed forces in degrading the terrorists and then rooting them out from their stronghold of Sambisa Forest. The championship being revived was last held in Jaji Kaduna State from the Sambisa Forest in Borno State. Well, that report by Ismail Musa from Sambisa Forest. In the meantime, in discharging its constitutional role, the Nigerian Army is improving the communication skills of its officers and men. This came to the fore at the Guards Brigade First Quarter Inter-Unit Short Talk Competition in Abuja. Special advisor to the President and Media and Publicity, Femi Adishina, had a focal message. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports. <laughs> In boosting civil-military relations as it carries out interventions in areas of operations, this short talk competition is aimed at enhancing troops' confidence in public speaking. The exercise entails officers and soldiers from the participating units taking turns to explain their functions and what is expected of them during duty tours. Femi additional while commending the military's efforts in clearing remnants of Boko Haram terrorists in the Northeast and other parts of the country, noted that proficiency in listening, speaking, reading and writing will make them more professional in the discharge of their duties. I am delighted that Gas Brigade in particular and the Nigerian Army in general is making efforts to train its personnel. This has become necessary in view of the security challenges and demand for security. You must therefore remain resolute and sustain the tempo of training and other regimental activities. Five battalions within and outside Abuja are participating in the short talk competition. Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Babachir David Lawal, says the administration will continue to work towards ensuring government businesses are done in more positive ways. This was at the opening of the first National Policy Dialogue on Strategies for Improving Service Delivery in parastatals, agencies and commissions. Timothy Yusuf reports. Indiscipline, inefficient service delivery and corruption have stared Nigeria's public service in the face over the years. It was to address this that a service compact with all Nigerians known as Servicom was established 12 years ago to ensure citizen-focused service delivery. In section, we, have no, we know that um, the customer who is the citizen who comes to take service, the service taker, has not been given proper attention. This assemblage of participants are exchanging ideas to advance improved service delivery as a direct outcome of the change agenda. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Babachir David Lawal, believes that citizen perception of the change agenda of the Buhari administration is as a result of improvements in service delivery. He emphasized the need to further reposition the service delivery initiative for the desired change in the nation's polity. In order to ensure the provision of essential services that meet the aspirations and expectations of the public, there must be shared responsibility accountability and synergy in the public service structure that is charged with the responsibility of implementing it. Hence, the importance of our gathering today to reflect on Nigeria's public service delivery journey in the past 12 years of Savicom initiative. The head of the civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, maintains that the public service remains the major provider in Nigeria 
As such, effective governance and democratic dividends can only be delivered to citizens through the service bureaucracy. We are going to see a lot of these uh, uh, changes. One thing we'll definitely be seeing is that there will be an enforcement of rules and regulations and where this is um, there's any um, you know lack anything la lacking there will be immediate uh, corrections seven and retired public officers who took tents to make imputes have to attitudinal change from all if government's change agenda must be realized the theme of the dialogue is efficient and effective service delivery imperatives for driving the change agenda in abuja timothy yusuf nta news Senate President Bukola Saraki and Senator Dino Melai have appeared before the Senate Committee on Ethics and Privileges to defend various allegations against them. National Assembly Correspondent Wazili Zayanu has the details. Senate President Bukola Saraki has been accused of importing a bulletproof SUV car without valid documents, while Senator Dino Melae was accused of forging certificates without obtaining a first degree from the Ahmad Bello University, Zaria. Both allegations circulating on the social media were brought to the floor of the Senate through a point of order by Senator Muhammad Ali Ndume. While testifying before the Senate Committee on Ethics, the Senate President denied the allegation of importing or having anything to do with the vehicle in contention. I'm not an importer. <coughs> At no time did I import any SUV Range Rover. On that cross examination from members of the Senate Committee, dealer of the vehicle in question corroborated that the car in contention was not acquired for the Senate President. The vehicle was not to be used by Senator Bukola Saraki. It was not imported or acquired for his use at the time when the vehicle came into the country. While defending Dino Melaye's allegation on certificate forgery, Vice Chancellor of the Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria Professor Ibrahim Garba, confirmed that Senator Dino Melaye graduated from the institution in the year 2000 and served the NYC in 2001. From the record from Ahmed Bell University, Zaria, distinguished Senator Ido Melai, who was at that time named Daniel Jonah Melai, graduated with a third class degree of the Bachelor's of Arts in Geography in the year 2000. Senator Dino Melai had earlier presented photocopies of his examination results, NYSE certificate, as well as an affidavit for the change of name from Jonah Daniel Melai to Dino Melai. Also testifying, Senator Muhammad Ali Ndume told the committee that he raised the point of order with good intentions of protecting the integrity of the Senate. You showed me the certificate. I said, oh, fine, so there's a certificate. He did that. So be clear. Wrong for public perception out there. And it's resolved. Chairman Senate Committee on Ethics and Privileges Samuel Anyao extended invitation to representatives of the Nigerian Customs to come and give testimony on the imported vehicle. Away from the investigation, the Chairman Senate Committee on Appropriation, Senator Mohamed Anju Magoje, said for the first time there will be no need for the usual mop up or official request from the executive for the extension of dates to implement annual budget. Senator Anju Magoje said, drawing inspiration from the 1999 Constitution, the Appropriation Act has made provision for the budget to run for a course of 12 months from the date it was signed. This extension is no longer necessary. It means the 2016 budget will run from 6 May 2016 up to 12 midnight May 5, 2017. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NT News. The federal government says there is no plan to extend the six-week time frame for the reopening of the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, and Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, restated this in Lagos at an interactive session with members of the Aviation Roundtable. Anthony Folsom reports. Let me use this opportunity to deploy the runners report making the runs that the closure of the Abuja airport has been extended by 18 weeks. This is not true. I'm very, very comfortable that we will be able to achieve the six weeks targets. To arrive to six weeks, I know the tremendous amount of work and thought process that we've gone through. 
The Information and Culture Minister and Minister of State for Aviation were in Lagos in continuation of their consultations with stakeholders in the aviation industry over the temporary closure of the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport. Lai Mohammed said the complete reconstruction work of the Abuja Airport is on course as alternative arrangements made have paid off. After six weeks, the Abuja Airport will be reopened. Oh, the remaining work on the runway will not necessitate the closure of the airport. On his part, the Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, said they have been comments over the federal government's action, but it was taken in the interest of the safety of lives of passengers. We don't want to do something that two years down the line, or three years down the line, or five years down the line, it will begin to uh, also say what well, I know is bad. Members of the Aviation Roundtable took on the ministers in a question and answer session, harping on the need for the federal government to overhaul the aviation sector, saying it is long overdue. President of the Roundtable, Benga Alo, drew attention to the huge potentials in the sector, saying from a weekly passenger seat of 12,000 in the year 2000. As of 2015, passenger seats, he said, have grown to 48,000, with a paltry 8% participation on account of non-availability of indigenous carriers in operation, leaving the market space to foreign airlines. The Minister of State for Aviation was quick to assure them that the present administration is equally worried and is working around the clock to reverse the trend. In Lagos, Anthony Forson, NTN News. In the meantime, handlers of rehabilitation works on the runway of the Namde Azikiwe International Airport Abuja have given an assurance of meeting the deadline for the completion of work. It was during inspection of the runway by the House of Representatives Committee on Aviation which expressed concern over what it considered the slow pace of work and the improbability of meeting the deadline. Emmanuel Ayimiru completes the story. It's been three weeks since rehabilitation work began on Abuja Airport runway. With three weeks to deadline for reopening, the 3.6 kilometers runway has experienced one form of rehabilitation work or the other. Asphalt is designed to last for 20 years depending on the traffic. The laying of a new technology known as glass fiber is also being introduced to prevent water and likely cracks. Hand glass spoke on other works that have been done so far. Laying of asphalt doesn't take uh, most of the time. It's the milling. When you mill and you see a bad area, you just generally have to stop, do the preparations, then before you continue. If you finish within three weeks, we have a program, and we are following that program. Most of our cables lined by the shoulders of the runway, they have been prepared. So immediately we have up, um, the finished surface pavement. We, we, we start coring and cutting off the uh, wireways. The House Committee on Inspection of the Rehabilitation want the contractors to step up. Nigerians are concerned that we wouldn't want any extension and we want them to give us a perfect job based on the agreement that we have reached. They said it's totally surfacing. So when we come to them, but they have to explain to us the, uh, the, the level of implementation to what they signed. Laying of asphalt and glass fiber are top among other rehabilitation work on the runway. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Minister of Fire, Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, has suspended work on the ongoing construction of the National Housing Program in Aduikiti. The minister, who expressed displeasure at the location of the project, queried its suitability and access to the people. Kola Adebubuyi has the details. The minister was in Egidi State to ascertain the states of federal roads to enable the federal government to fasten out modalities to make them most horrible. Accompanied by the state governor, Mr. Yodini Faoshe, the minister also inspected the 2016 National Housing Program, which is under construction in Adwegiti, where he expressed dissatisfaction with the location for easy access and suitable to serve the local community in the state. He ordered suspension of activities of the project. The minister reiterated the federal government's commitment to execute and provide enabling projects that will add value to Nigerians in line with the campaign promises of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration in Adwekiti, Kola Adibobuji, NTN News. 
And the House of Representatives out of Committee on the Review of Pump Price of Petrol says it will ensure that government pays all legitimate claims by companies involved in oil and gas exploration when investigation is concluded. This was the position of the committee at the public hearing in Abuja on the review of petroleum pricing template for petrol. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nani reports. You say government is owing you? 9.4 billion, sir. Uh, yes, emanating from what? Subsidy claims, forest differential, and interest. A yes. name appeared on the crude lifting, but we have not lifted any single crude. The ad hoc committee reviewed the process of lifting crude oil by some of the companies involved in exploration and production in the downstream and upstream sector, as well as how the companies obtain licenses and source forests for their operations. It is also interested in substantiating or subsidy claims accruing interest, forest, and differential claims by these companies to ensure that the country is not shortchanged. For those we find to be on the side of integrity and have their books clean and their operations clean, we will recommend that such people should be treated and paid off. Even those who have been paid, and out of our observation, we have observed some infraction, we will call for government to retrieve what have been paid over what is due to them. Why that her committee requested Bova's group to provide details of forest allocation received under the Special Intervention Fund from June 2016 till date, and its applications, it says, submissions by the invited companies are subject to further investigation with the Central Bank of Nigeria. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, says it has now reached a final settlement with ITEL Group for crude swaps under deliveries. A statement by its group general manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Indu Gamadu, says in line with the ongoing reforms in the industry, the management under the leadership of Dr. Maikan Chibaru is committed to ensuring transparency and adequate public information on the ongoing recovery effort. The corporation also stated that ITEL Group has paid in full all its outstanding indebtedness amounting to about $202 million. It includes ITEL's share of $184 million total indebtedness and other downstream liabilities. The statement also adds that two other companies are involved in the crude oil swap. They are Televaras Group of Companies and Ontario Oil and Gas. Televaras is said to have pledged to make a tranche payment of $17.2 million and is still engaging Ontario Oil and Gas for mutual settlement. And you can watch this broadcast live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And still ahead on the news, more relief for pensioners. The details when we return. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. And this is my Suleri. For those of you not from around here, Suleri means patience has its rewards. I was the youngest of four children. That's where my friends and I used to rehearse before I got signed. A lot of this becomes a part of you, becomes a part of your sound. Like I said, I never had patience. It took years for anyone to listen to you. That changed all that. Now anything's possible. If you want something, run full tilt at it. And this 
for seven, upload, download, share it, like it, tweet it, post it, world. Your life can change in a second, but the only question is, are you ready for it? Enjoy the fastest 3G and 4G data speed nationwide at the same price. Dial star triple seven hash. I am Whiskey. This is my Sule, my Echo, my Niger, my network. The largest data network. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new GOV M6, carry out everything on that list. Starting now. with a 5,000 milliamp battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Gioni M6, always in power. No man, yeah, yeah, boy. I think sir, I'm for computer school. So I go start use computer to write UTM exam. The boy called the play football. No, dear, your baby here for not you. To write UTM exam now. You don't need to save plenty computer. Just save damn special eight keys way there on top computer. A, B, C, D for to take answer question. P for preview or back. N for next or forward. Double click S for submit. And arrow for return or reverse. And send or form. Not be six months again, no. Now only one month. From March 20 to April 19. No more scratch card, though. Buy your pin at approved banks and Wakago any approved jam CBT center for registration. Meanwhile, optional mock exam day for April 8. And the main exam will start from May 6, 2017. You sabi any special Wuduguru center where I can put my ticket so that even if you fail, it could pass. Yeah. Hmm? Look, you better tell your picking now to read well, well, oh, because no Wuduguru plus Mago Mago for jump again, no. Oh, if you don't read well, well, you go fail. This message is by Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, enhancing academic excellence. Um, hello, um, I just got back from the States and um, I need a SIM so I can have a number. What? Nyafu, nyafu. If you join them to end, you go enjoy bonus bracket. What bracket? See, eh, only bonus wouldn't give you. You go fit to do anything you like with them. Chatting, no, browsing, no, texting, no, calling, no, to any network about Nigeria and no condition at all. Completely free, no. Everything you go through. What buckle? If you buy the charge card 100 naira, eh, they go give you 600 naira. If you call the charge 200 naira, as a big beverage you is now, they will give you 1,200 naira. Hey, boss, you like, show me the way now. Get an MTN SIM, register it, and get six times of all your recharges every time you recharge, and much more. So you be here, then you got the phone line. Hello, now, package <laughs> MTN, everywhere you go. Chicho, Chicho, huh? I want to die. Huh? What, what? Calm down. What is the problem? That bank, huh? they value with all my money. Which bank? Oh, oh, the Wonder Bank. <laughs> yes. They made it with all my entire savings after promising to, to double my investment. Oh. Hey, I'm finished. Oh. 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 Remember, I warned you that those Wonder Banks and Ponzi schemes are illegal. They come up with all sorts of schemes to give you a 100% interest or more on your deposit uh, within a very short period. Uh, yes. After collecting your money, they disappear. Hey! Many unsuspecting investors have been duped by these so-called banks and uh, financial houses. <laughs> yes. Next time, when you want to put your money in any investment, <laughs> either in any bank or any financial house, make sure you do a thorough investigation through the financial regulators in the sector. Hi. I'm finished. <laughs> Beware of scammers. Don't put your life's investment in wonder banks and other questionable institutions. This message is from the Financial Services Regulation Coordinating Committee, FSRCC. Thanks for staying with us on Network News. Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambazal, has implored cadets at the Police Academy Kanu to take advantage of the opportunities available at the academy 
to develop themselves into intelligent and efficient police officers capable of providing effective and efficient policing. General Dambazov was at the matriculation ceremony of 182 cadets of the 4th Regular Corps at the Academy. He reiterated the determination of the Buhari administration to reform the Nigeria police, while noting also that the cardinal policy of the administration is centered around security, fighting corruption, and creating avenues for gainful employment for Nigeria's youths to utilize their enormous potential. The interior minister urged the commandant of the academy, the coordinator, and other principal officers to contribute meaningfully towards the advancement of the academy. Now, unity of purpose and synergy among agencies has been identified to be imperative in strengthening efforts aimed at liberating Nigeria from the stronghold of corruption. Acting Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, stated this at the inauguration of a national anti-corruption stakeholder summit in Abuja. Musa Abubakar reports. The paradox Nigeria is materially endowed and the well-being of the citizenry is in a state of decline at the expense of corruption set the stage for the summit. Brainstorming on ways to improve the current anti-corruption fight through cross-fertilization of ideas by relevant agencies as well as urgent actors to key in the anti-corruption crusade is the focus of the summit. This is an event that affects everybody. Somebody described it as the greatest violation of human rights. Common consensus among by from all Nigerians to agree to join us in the fight against corruption. Everybody should be involved. And I, I think that when you give the complexity of the problem, you can't be the amount of finance that some people want. You are not going to be able to, 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 to get with a team building national anti-corruption consensus in a multi-agency environment, a syndicate group is expected to come up with a communique at the end of the two-day event. The anti-corruption fight by the federal government is poised to ensuring that accountability is instilled and scarce public resources is properly managed and utilized. The expected outcome is to promote transparency and better service delivery. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar. NT News. The federal government and the African Development Bank are jointly providing over $200 million to empower over 200,000 youths through agriculture. The program, which was flagged off in Abuja, will also ensure increase in food production through improved seeds. Musa Baba Aliu has the details. The initiative is designed based on the statistics that indicate that majority of the farmers producing food in Nigeria are the aged. The youth who are expected to take over from them have shown little or no interest in farming activities. The five-year agricultural program was therefore developed to provide an enabling environment that will encourage the youth, irrespective of their areas of discipline, to participate in all aspects of food production. Uh, some of them are in large-scale rice mills, some are going to wheat production, some are going to sugar, cassava starch, they can play there. But some of these areas have to be literally left for younger people and small groups, women, youth cooperatives. The key components of the project include training and empowering of over 200,000 youths, as well as production of over 20,000 metric tons of food per annum. After the training, we are going to give them starter tax, and they write business plans. They are going to get money from commercial banks. And with the support from the Federal Government of Nigeria and African Development Bank, we will not have problem achieving our targets. After the training, participants will be linked to off-takers. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Pensioners have reiterated the need for government to treat their entitlements as top priority and help reduce the agony they endure during the many verification processes. This was brought to the fore on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria as the program x-rayed the challenges of pension administration in Nigeria. Gufan Chaji reports. Pensions administrators on the program explained that they can only act when funds get to them as they are solely dependent on the government. They also insist that processes are in place to pay all arrears owed pensioners in the country. They, however, say all is being done 
to wrap up the authentication of documents by pensioners and verification process in the country. Yeah, the, the government and the agency should please try as much as possible to remove these complaints and uh, take necessary steps to see that things run smoothly. That after this round of verification, there won't be any need to come out to do this verification again. Uh, look, we don't want this to continue. Let's address this now so that people who are just entering the service over time, they will not fall into the same trap. You get to a governor and he says, hey, uh, what you are getting me to pay was accumulated by my predecessor. Uh, they never believe uh, what any other person left behind is part of their responsibility, which is very sad. The Nigerian Labour Congress also restated its commitment to ensuring that those old backlog of arrears are paid as quickly as possible. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTA News. Federal Commissioner for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Sadia Umar Farouk, has expressed the Commission's willingness to partner relevant key players towards addressing issues affecting the management of refugees, particularly women and girls. She stated this during an interaction with the ECOWAS Commission. Chiazalam Iki has details. the Nigerian military continues its vigor towards ensuring lasting peace in the Northeast, proper management and resettlement of these vulnerable group remains a vital issue of concern to the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. With about 2.4 million displaced persons currently in the country, the Commission says there is the need to properly strengthen the coordination mechanism with the relevant agencies. This is in the area of support effort within and outside Nigeria's border, especially in Chad, Niger, and Cameroon, particularly as it relates to women and girls who are to become agents of peace. They are the most vulnerable, so there's need for special attention uh, on them. In areas of, of empowerment, economic empowerment of these people, of the women, as well as educate education uh, for their children, and also in the area of psychosocial because of the trauma that they've been in. ECOWAS Commissioner for Social Services and Gender, Fatima Tadiaso, notes that the issue of refugees remains a big task to ECOWAS, hence the need to increase the visibility of what ECOWAS is doing. We have uh, done uh, some action, operational action at the level of Nigeria with regard to girls. We are giving each year scholarship for the young girls, for their education, and specifically the young girls in uh, remote areas who don't have access to education. ECOWAS and the Commission hopes that with this collaboration, a firm commitment will be achieved. Chiazalam Eki, NTA News. Time now to go over to a Lagos Network Center for more reports. Vera is sitting in tonight. Good evening, Vera. Thank you, Cyril. Good to see you. And a very warm welcome to Lagos. Legislative staff from ECOWAS member states are in Lagos for training. It is aimed at harmonizing parliamentary practices and procedures among national assemblies of member states. The training is also expected to strengthen democratic institutions and deepen democracy in the sub-region. Abolade Salame reports that the Secretary General ECOWAS Parliament, Dr. Nelson Mamabubuala, declared the training session open. Secretary General ECOWAS Parliament, Dr. Nelson Mamabubuala says the training will help promote good governance peace and development, as well as assist member states to inculcate efficient and productive legislative processes that will help strengthen democratic institutions within the framework of economic integration. Dr. Mambabuela added that the training will help integrate West African legislative staff on an effective management of parliamentary committees. All the countries in West Africa practice democratic system, and it's very important that we get ready to, to develop and sustain democratic process in West Africa. Director General, National Institute for Legislative Studies, Dr. Ladi Amalea, represented by the Director of Research and Training, Dr. Adeyemi Fajingbesi, says the training is essential to keep legislative heads on their primary functions. The objective of this particular workshop is, among others, to bring the legislature up to that standard of development in terms of uh, skills and functionality. We are trying now 
to make sure that uh, all the uh, parliamentary personnel have the capacities, the skills to perform their, their jobs, their missions. The National Institute for Legislative Studies is the foremost world-class facility in the Okowa sub-region devoted to legislative training, parliamentary research studies and publications. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Because you're watching NTA Network News, we take a break now for some messages. The news returns shortly. Stay with us. Some things we get to fit finish, but no be credit to. Hello? Your credit is to finish this call. I beg to recharge your phone. I will not finish. Oh, yeah. Just dial star 321 hash for bony credit and collect credit where you go fit pay for later. We are talk the go with bony credit. <laughs> Carry the whole tank of water the cup. I beg no time. Eh? I don't wait for you, sir. The love I come, you do well, well, well. You borrow me credit. Well, well. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. <laughs> This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. What makes a ninja mom powerful? I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's One Cap Full. To fight germs, it's like my own first aid kit. My family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's One Cap Full to disinfect surfaces and clothes to keep them clean and safe from germs. I trust the power of Dettol's One Cap Full for bathing. The power of Dettol's One Cap Full protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Millions of powerful ninja moms use the power of Dettol's One Cap Full to protect their families. Be a powerful ninja mom with Dettol. Be 100% sure. She's academically so good. Could have been better. My grade, fitness F. Emotional well-being, E. E? I want you to play with me only you get tired. Mom, I want you and the baby to be healthy. Promise. I'll eat healthy food, okay? I love you. Let's play together and be a big champion. Back with the rest of the news in Abuja. Financial institutions ordered to sell dollar not above 360 naira. And federal government says efforts ongoing to improve the nation's ease of doing business. The details with Leah Katumba Batunde. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has released the sum of $85 million for sale to deposit money banks at the rate of 357 naira per dollar for onward sale to retail end users at not more than 360 naira per dollar for invisibles such as basic travel allowance, BTAs, medicals, and school fees. The bank on Monday, March 27, also offered the sum of $100 million to authorize forex dealers in the interbank wholesale window to meet the request of genuine wholesale customers. Disclosing these, the bank's acting director in charge of corporate communications, Isaac Okorafo, said the rates in the interbank window for wholesale transactions will still be determined by activities in the interbank market. What is the projection of Nigeria's investment climate in line with the ease of doing business? Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment Akichuku Enalama in this interview with Cliff Ayose gives an insight 
into government's projection. Take a listen. The process of building a nation is a, is a long-term one, of which five years uh, may not be sufficient, but you can do a lot in five years. And our objective is to make sure that uh, Nigeria in five years is an attractive country to do business in, where, like you said, the foreign direct investment is coming in. And the domestic investors are also happy to invest in their own country. We're also working to make sure that we restore market confidence, investor confidence, business confidence, in a way that people will see Nigeria as an attractive place to do business. Nigeria is currently ranked 170 out of 189 countries in the World Bank Ease of Doing Business. Now, meanwhile, the Nigerian stock market resumed the week upbeat as major indicators pointed northward. Next is a graphic summary. And that is business news for this hour. Thank you for watching. The bulletin will continue shortly. And poised to reduce substandard goods in Nigeria and improve agricultural produce for exportation, the Standards Organization of Nigeria has organized a sectoral stakeholder sensitization for the South South Zone in Calabar. Maureen Liu Ajom has details. The workshop organized in partnership with Clinton Enterprise Nigeria Limited focused on the reduction of substandard goods in Nigeria, improved decision making to avoid substandard goods, export potentials of the South South Zone, and improvement of agricultural produce for export in Nigeria. Stakeholders emphasized the need for proper branding of made in Nigeria goods, the need to encourage Nigerians to invest in commercial agriculture and creating markets for export. If you are, if you are, if you are packaging, package according to standards, whatever you do, do it according to international standards. It's going to expose our farmers into various ways they can standardize their own produce so that they can export to make more money. I, I just pray that the mentality of farmers will change, their mindset will change, so that they'll go away from only producing to eat and begin to think about producing after eating to spare to sell out. Standards Organization of Nigeria expressed determination to reduce substandard goods and improve agricultural produce. They are very rich in textiles, in agricultural produce generally, and we're here to make sure that we do not lose the value of the goods we produce. Some participants at the workshop described the sensitization as apt and expository. I've learned most important, importantly the rebranding of my products. A 16-point communique was issued at the end with a call on the Standard Organization of Nigeria to decentralize their services while calling on the federal government to reduce cumbersome processes to ease exportation of farm produce. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajong, NTN News. Patience, commitment, and respect for constituted authority have been identified as attributes and the secret to success in the civil service. Head of the civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, said this at the send forth for one of the permanent secretaries. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. The dream of every civil servant is to exit the service with untarnished records after successfully contributing his quota to national development. Mr. Innocent Ogbonaya, a permanent secretary in the office of the head of the civil service of the Federation is one of such accomplished civil servants whose colleagues, friends, family members, and well-wishers showered and come on and urge those still in service to emulate his qualities and attitude to work for the development of the country. Despite all the, the storms of life. Head of the civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, described him as a humble, simple, unassuming, hardworking, dedicated and loyal person. On a day like this, you hear the encomiums and people are actually speaking genuinely from the heart. Innocent Bonaya bows out of service as permanent secretary after attaining the age of 60. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. A new movie titled Sometime in September 
is scheduled for premiere on the 2nd of April 2017 at the Silverbird Cinema Abuja by 5 p.m. A statement signed by the Director of Entertainment and Creative Service, Federal Minister of Information and Culture, Grace Getwe, says the movie is aimed at creating awareness on handling autism spectrum disorder in children. She said the film was directed by filmmaker Ayaba Emmanuel, a member of the Directors Guild of Nigeria, and produced by Hensho Emmanuel, head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, and the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, are billed to attend. Now we'll take another break for more messages. Stay with us. Made in Nigeria goods and the drawbacks of a substandard product is in focus on Tuesday Live. Finding the economy through Made in Nigeria goods on this week's edition of Tuesday Live. Tuesday Live, informative, educative, and incisive. Don't miss it. What makes a Niger mom powerful? I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's One Cap Full. To fight germs, it's like my own first aid kit. My family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's One Capful to disinfect surfaces and clothes to keep them clean and safe from germs. I trust the power of Dettol's One Capful for bathing. The power of Dettol's One Capful protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Millions of powerful Ninja moms use the power of Dettol's One Capful to protect their families. Be a powerful Ninja mom with Dettol. Be 100% sure. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC impacts upon everything we do, including what we drink, the food we eat, they are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefits and success that they need to record. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. A bit on the global scene now. Kenya military records success in the fight against Al Shabaab militants, and two people die in Dutch town in the Netherlands as train and car collide. Plus, seven Japanese students and a teacher die in an avalanche at a ski resort. These and more on global tidbits with Chimdema Ndubisi. Kenyan military officers operating in Somalia have raided an Al-Shabaab militant's base, killing 31 militants and seizing their ammunition. From Sudan comes a report that the government, in playing the role of a big brother, has opened up a route through which aid materials could be delivered to South Sudan. Two ships loaded with 47,000 tons of cereal crop docked at Port Sudan are to be delivered to the 7.5 million people affected by famine in South Sudan. The United Nations lauded the move, but aid agencies said operations in South Sudan will be reassessed following the killings of six aid workers, of which the government and rebels are still trading blames on who is responsible for the killing. In Australia, up to 25,000 people have been told to leave their homes as a cyclone with winds of about 275 kilometers per hour is headed towards the Queensland coast. More than 5,000 people have already been evacuated, while some people refused to leave in spite of the warning. That's Global Tidbits, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. Sport now, Akwa Ibom State Government pledges to do more for sport as Rafael Nadal makes progress in Miami. Dendi Sani reports. Aqua Ibom State Government says it will continue to organize sports competitions at the grassroots level as part of its contribution in fishing out hidden talent.